This video supported in part by In 1976, gaming industry pioneers Steve Wozniak, Nolan Bushnell, and Steve Bristow took inspiration from Pong to develop Atari's next legendary arcade title, Breakout. Now, 46 years later, Atari, along with developers Atom Vision and Sneaky Box, has added Breakout to their line of reimagined Atari arcade classics in Breakout Recharged. This fifth entry in the Recharge series stays true to form. Graphics are converted to that neon, vectorized look, a strobing playfield grid added to the background, the addition of power-ups to modify gameplay, and a techno soundtrack to tie it all together. The art design of the original Breakout sported bright, vibrant colors for the bricks on a stark background. The neon outline style here, though, is quite a bit more muted. It's worth noting that Breakout is a prison break game. You're a prison inmate trying to knock your ball and chain against the wall of your prison cell with a mallet. But in this game, when the ball hits the paddle, the paddle makes a bit of a splash animation like you're smacking it with a wet noodle in a kiddie pool. <laughs> the sounds of the ball and paddle are kind of squishy too. And though this doesn't necessarily detract from the game, it is quite a bit of a departure from the prisoner breaking out of jail aesthetic that's embraced in the art assets but seem to have been dismissed in the game design itself. On the plus side, the non-paddle ball sounds are appropriately sharp, crackly, or explodey. And finally, on that audio front, the Megan McDuffie soundtrack is here again and has that same familiar, ominous, yet bouncy beat we've come to expect from this series. General gameplay holds true to form. Using your paddle, keep volleying the ball into the bricks in order to destroy them and shoot for the highest score. A few styles of bricks have been added into the mix, including armored bricks that require multiple hits, exploding bricks, switch bricks that add bricks to the playfield when hit, power-up bricks, and offensive bricks which can either shoot at you or drop a bullet when destroyed. And it's those bullets that turn out to be the most frustrating facet of Breakout Recharged, because that dropping artillery can, and often is, at the same place on the screen as the ball, meaning your choice is to get shot, game over, or miss the ball, also game over. It can be very frustrating to die when it's not your fault, and even more so when you're close to breaking your high score. Keep your Kobayashi Maru out of my Breakout! And on the topic of those bricks, rather than a static rack, bricks sort of gradually space invader their way down the screen. This is in line with the Recharge series where each game is a non-stop marathon to get the best possible score with a single life. When you clear those bricks, the next, more complex rack appear at the top of the playfield. As you can imagine, the lower on screen a brick is when you hit it, the less reaction time you'll have to react to its new downward path. And speaking of a single life game, the menu here suggests a classic mode of Breakout. I was excited and thought that meant there was going to be the original Breakout in all of its old school glory present in this package. No, all that means is a version of Breakout Recharge with three lives instead of one with its own set of leaderboards. And it's really too bad. All along, I thought inclusion of the original in these Recharge titles would be a no brainer. And I thought it was gonna happen here, but nope, turns out not. Like in previous titles, you can control the game either with your keyboard or gamepad, but more importantly, here on the PC version, mouse control support is available by default. I know we had trouble with Centipede not providing it, not providing it well, but boy, here in Breakout, out of the gate, yes, it's included. It has that precision you want for Breakout. Small adjustments are small, and quick trips across the screen are just as intuitive as whipping your mouse from side to side. It is a great way to drive this game. And since a mouse is basically just an upside down trackball, that means more traditional arcade controls are also supported. Just for fun, I even spun up Breakout Recharged on my arcade cabinet. It controlled great with a full-size trackball, giving me all the control that I wanted. And more importantly, I configured my spinner to play Breakout Recharged the way it was intended with a nice weighted dial. I have no complaints about the controls for the single player game here. Power-ups are a signature facet of the Recharge series, and they're back in Breakout. Many are familiar if you've played previous Recharge titles, of uh, various weapon fire patterns, time dilation effects, creating explosives on screen, and of course, for Breakout, multi-ball. 
Once again, the duration of a power-up is represented around the border of the screen with a timer that slowly drains as your time using it runs out. This time around, power-ups are a fun distraction, but they can be a dangerous distraction. Once you spawn one by destroying a power-up brick, the power-ups fall very slowly and can be tough to catch. And if you focus on them too much, you're likely to miss your ball and then it's game over, plus you didn't get the power-up. One of the most interesting and distracting power-ups here is Show Trajectory, which does the math for you and plots out the expected path the ball will be taking. Then you introduce the possibility for explosive on-screen effects that can clutter the playfield and make it possible to lose track of the ball. What I'm getting at here is that the power-ups are great fun, but due to the frenetic and unforgiving nature of Breakout, you're well advised to keep your eye on the ball and just let power-ups happen rather than actively trying to catch and utilize them. And remember that not all power-ups can stack together. While some modify your ball and others the paddle, grabbing a ball-modifying power-up will usually negate the paddle power-up. It takes a little trial and error to figure out what does go together, but I'll tell you my favorite combination of all is multi-ball along with time warp, which gives you three balls on the screen and yet slows them down when they reach the bottom to give you time to keep up with all three balls. Super powerful and very rewarding. Power-ups notwithstanding, this is still breakout though. So regardless of how many bells and whistles you add, some of the best fun to be had is when you get your ball above the layout and it goes absolutely ham on all those bricks. Ah, it's the simple pleasures. A local couch co-op version of Breakout Recharged is also offered. The way it's laid out is each player has a half of the screen with a dividing wall between you. When the game begins, two balls are introduced into the field, and your paddle can only traverse the half of the screen where you start. But unlike with previous titles, there's no resurrecting your friend's paddle with magic power-ups if they die. Once the first player goes, the barrier between you disappears and it turns back into a one-player game. Co-op also introduces a bit of a control conundrum. There's only one mouse connected to your gaming PC, so somebody's gonna be stuck using the keyboard or a controller, meaning that player will be at a noted disadvantage. You can opt to both play with a controller to even it out, but that just makes it a subpar experience for both players compared to having a mouse, trackball, or spinner. But I'm not gonna beat up the game for this limitation. That's just how it is. At least we do have that mouse and trackball support. The silver lining on this cloud is that since co-op here is nowhere near as fun or as engaging as it was on previous titles, the odds are you'll try it once and seldom come back to it. Of course, it wouldn't be a recharged title without challenging stages here for some added play value. 50 challenging stages are introduced that can be played single player or co-op. Most of the stages highlight a particular brick type or power-up type and challenge you to accomplish a certain goal like destroy all the bricks or reach a certain score in the fastest time possible. I played all of these after I put several hours into the main game, but only then realized they actually serve quite well as a tutorial for all the gameplay varieties introduced in this breakout. It would be easy to look at this version of Breakout with power-ups added and think it's just going to be a knockoff of the arcade game Arkanoid, but that's not the case here. There's much more available, from that non-stop flow of bricks to creative power-ups and ways to combine them, and those superb controls finally done right out of the box. And just in case you thought I wouldn't mention it, yes, all those cool achievements that take inspiration directly from Pink Floyd. Questionable art design choices aside, I am going to award Breakout Recharged three tokens out of five. Not the best in the series so far, but also not the worst and definitely worth a play if you were a Breakout fan. For even more on this Atari Recharged series, I invite you to watch reviews of both Centipede and Asteroids. I hope you found something to enjoy in this review, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.